everyone, Dustin from Looney Loomworks here, and welcome to part two of How to Spin. Today, I'm going to show you how to manipulate your fiber to go ahead and start the spinning process. Let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Now that we're at our spinning wheel and we have our lead attached and to, attached to our fiber, what we're going to do is go ahead and grip your knot of where you attached your fiber to the lead and give a little bit of pull on your fiber. Go ahead and let it kind of slide out as such and gives you a general idea of how thick your yarn is going to be. Now, what I like to do is I take my left hand and hold on to the fiber up into an area so that the twist doesn't continue up into your unspun fiber. This is going to prevent it from taking this big chunk up here and starting to twist it. You're going to want to regulate how much you feed it. So how I do it is I hold on, pull it out some, and then when I'm ready to start spinning, I'll go ahead and move my hand up, up the uh, fibers here, so that it will go ahead and spin what's between the wheel and my fingers. My right hand is going to be holding my fiber that I'm going to be feeding into it. Now if you watch as I'm spinning, I'm going to keep my left hand on it so it doesn't keep spinning up, and then when I'm ready, I will go ahead and slide it as I'm spinning. It's kind of a finding the groove. The trick is finding the groove between your two hands, the rhythm, <coughs> excuse me, the rhythm of feeding your fiber into what's being spun. All right, let's go ahead and get started, and I'll explain it as we go. So first off, usually your initial one ply is going to be spun in a clockwise direction. So let's get that started. And then there we are. See, I'm pinching just lightly with my left hand, just enough to keep it from going up. And then when it's time to go ahead and move up, I go ahead and pull back with my right hand and I slide my left hand back with it. Now you don't want to over twist. If you go ahead and over twist your spinning, it will start to kind of get kinky and you can feel it really pulling in your left hand. So you just go ahead and just kind of keep that pattern going. Just constantly, just nice and gently pulling with your right hand to expand out that fiber while using your left hand to hold the twist in place. Because now if I release with my left hand, what's going to happen is that it's going to take all of that fiber and then twist it. See how it's twisting all of that in there? You don't want that. That's going to create a really fat batch of apply. That's not a bad thing if you want to do thicker. I prefer a nice small f single ply. That way I can ply it together and create a stronger yarn but do it at whatever width you feel most comfortable with. For beginners, I highly suggest doing a thicker spin other than the smaller. And then that's the basis of spinning. You just keep going and feeding it in there just ever so gently. This is not a race. You do not have to spin quickly. You can go nice and slow with your wheel if you're more comfortable doing that. If you don't feel any pressure on your left hand as it's spinning, you'll feel a slight pressure as it tries to pull your yarn onto the wheel. If you don't feel any pressure, go ahead and tighten down your tension. The tension is what is going to create the pull from it spinning and putting it onto the bobbin itself. So just find that nice comfortable medium and away you go. Now, what happens if your fiber breaks? Let's just say, for whatever reason, you slip or you sneeze and you pull out your, what you have spun compared to your wool that you are spinning. Don't worry, this happens. All you need to do is go ahead and take your left hand, set it between your fingers, Go ahead and pinch down on just a little bit of the excess from your cloud, as I like to call it, of fiber. And then go ahead and just kind of pull. Just kind of pull out some more. 
And what that's going to do is going to take that fiber from your cloud and put it over the fiber from what you have already spun, but haven't gotten into between your fingers yet. So then I go ahead at that point and pinch down with my right hand as well. Kind of pull that just a little bit taut. And what that will do is go ahead and continue the motion and it'll spin those fibers together and take care of that breakage. And then you're good to go again. And just repeat this process and you'll eventually get it down without any breaks or inconsistencies. And don't worry if your yarn turns out to be a little bit fatter than mine or inconsistencies on the thickness of it. All of that comes with practice. The more you spin, the more even your spinning is going to be. And there's my puppy dog always giving me a little bit of attitude. And there we are. Congratulations, you have learned how to spin. Just repeat that process over and over again, and you're good to go. And just like that, you have learned the basics of manipulating your fiber and getting it spun onto your spinning wheel. Don't worry if you make mistakes, if it keeps breaking, if your yarn just keeps creating little bumps and inconsistencies. This happens to all beginning spinners. Just keep practicing, and I promise you it will keep getting better and better. Be sure to join us for part three of where I will be teaching you how to change colors and moving your yarn further down on the bobbin. I look forward to seeing you in the future. And as always, stay loony and I love you.